Thank you for joining with me. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. We are in A Course in Miracles. This is the third edition of the Foundation for Inner Peace version, um, A Course in Miracles, the combined volume. We are doing a journey through the text. Currently, we are on Chapter 5, Healing and Wellness, page 78. And today, we are starting Section 3, The Guide to Salvation. If you would like to close your eyes and join me in prayer. Dear Father, please enable me an open mind for a new experience with all things today, especially this reading. With my brothers, with you, God, please allow me the ability to set aside everything I think I know. Because I know that my thoughts and my beliefs almost killed me. And um, that is the truth. But thank God that it is possible to have an open mind for a new experience. All right, let's go ahead and read section three of chapter five. Guide to Salvation The way to recognize your brother is by recognizing the Holy Spirit in him. I have already said that the Holy Spirit is the bridge for the transfer of perception to knowledge, so we can use the terms as if they were related, because in his mind they are. This relationship must be in his mind, because unless it were, the separation between the two ways of thinking would not be open to healing. He is part of the Holy Trinity because his mind is partly yours and also partly God's. This needs clarification, not in statement, but in experience. The Holy Spirit is the idea of healing, being thought the ideal gains as it is shared. Being the call for God, it is also the idea of God. Since you are part of God, it is also the idea of yourself as well as of all his creations. The idea of the Holy Spirit shares the property of other ideas because it follows the laws of the universe of which it is part. It is strengthened by being given away. It increases in you as you give it to your brother. Your brother does not have to be aware of the Holy Spirit in himself or in you for this miracle to occur. I have to show you. <laughs> My little puppy's trying to get around the book. Oops, say hi, Gertie. That was attractive, sorry. He may have dissociated the call for God just as you have. This dissociation is healed in both of you as you become aware of the call for God in him and thus acknowledge its being. There are two diametrically opposed ways of seeing your brother. They must both be in your mind because you are the perceiver. They must also be in his because you are perceiving him. See him through the Holy Spirit in his mind and you will recognize him in yours. What you acknowledge in your brother, you are acknowledging in yourself. And what you share, you strengthen. The voice of the Holy Spirit is weak in you. That is why you must share it. It must be increased in strength before you can hear it. It is impossible to hear it in yourself while it is so weak in your mind. It is not weak in itself, but it is limited by your unwillingness to hear it. If you make the mistake of looking for the Holy Spirit in yourself alone, your thoughts will frighten you, because by adopting the ego's viewpoint, you are undertaking the ego-alien journey with the ego as guide. This is bound to produce fear. Delay is of the ego because time is its concept. Both time and delay are meaningless in eternity. 
I have said before that the Holy Spirit is God's answer to the ego. Everything of which the Holy Spirit reminds you is in direct opposition of the ego's notions because true and false perceptions are themselves opposed. The Holy Spirit has the task of undoing what the ego has made. He undoes it at the same level on which the ego operates or the mind would be unable to understand the change. I have repeatedly emphasized that one level of the mind is not understandable to another. So it is with the ego and the Holy Spirit, with time and eternity. Eternity is an idea of God, so the Holy Spirit understands it perfectly. Time is a belief of the ego, so the lower mind, which is the ego's domain, accepts it without question. The only aspect of time that is eternal is now. The Holy Spirit is the mediator between the interpretations of the ego and the knowledge of the Spirit. His ability to deal with symbols enables him to work with the ego's beliefs in its own language. His ability to look beyond symbols into eternity enables him to understand the laws of God for which he speaks. He can therefore perform the function of reinterpreting what the ego makes not by destruction but by understanding. Understanding is light and light leads to knowledge. The Holy Spirit is in light because he is in you who are light, but you yourself do not know this. It is therefore the task of the Holy Spirit to reinterpret you on behalf of God. You cannot understand yourself alone. This is because you have no meaning apart from your rightful place in the Sonship, and the rightful place of the Sonship is God. This is your life, your eternity, and your self. It is of this that the Holy Spirit reminds you. It is this that the Holy Spirit sees. This vision frightens the ego because it is so calm. Peace is the ego's greatest enemy because according to its interpretation of reality, war is the guarantee of its survival. The ego becomes strong in strife. If you believe there is strife, you will react viciously because the idea of danger has entered your mind. The idea itself is an appeal to the ego. The Holy Spirit is as vigilant as the ego to the call of danger, opposing it with his strength just as the ego welcomes it. The Holy Spirit counters this welcome by welcoming peace. Eternity and peace are as closely related as our time and war. Perception derives meaning from relationships. Those you accept are the foundations of your beliefs. The separation is merely another term for a split mind. The ego is the symbol of separation just as the Holy Spirit is the symbol of peace. What you perceive in others, you are strengthening in yourself. You may let your mind misperceive, but the Holy Spirit lets your mind reinterpret its own misperceptions. The Holy Spirit is the perfect teacher. He uses only what your mind already understands to teach you that you do not understand it. The Holy Spirit can deal with a reluctant learner without going counter to his mind, because part of it is still for God. Despite the ego's attempts to conceal this part, it is much stronger than the ego, although the ego does not recognize it. The Holy Spirit recognizes it perfectly because it is his own dwelling place, the place in the mind where he is at home. You are at home there too because it is a place of peace and peace is of God. 
You who are part of God are not at home except in his peace. If peace is eternal, you are at home only in eternity. The ego made the world as it perceives it, but the Holy Spirit, the reinterpreter of what the ego made, sees the world as a teaching device for bringing you home. The Holy Spirit must perceive time and reinterpret it into the timeless. He must work through opposites because he must work with and for a mind that is in opposition. Correct and learn and be open to learning. You have not made truth, but truth can still set you free. Look as the Holy Spirit looks and understand as he understands. This understanding looks back to God in remembrance of me. He is in your communion with God always, and he is part of you. He is your guide to salvation because he holds the remembrance of things past and to come and brings them to the present. He holds this gladness gently in your mind asking only that you increase it in his name by sharing it to increase his joy in you. Please join me for the meditation for today, lesson 40. I am blessed as a son of God. I am blessed as a son of God.
Now when you're ready, go ahead and think of three things that you are grateful for. Let's go ahead and connect to that feeling that gratitude gives us. Gratitude and love. Connect to the lightness, the purity, the beauty the truth and let's go ahead and share that beauty and truth throughout the day with everyone we meet I love you have a beautiful day thank you for joining with me